varsity teams now that some of the junior varsity teams are going to be cut. Some of the sports do have other options through other resources, but track, wrestling, and volleyball do not. Some of the sports that do have other options would still hurt people, seeing as their coaches would put out of a job. Though for most coaches, it isn't a job to them. It's an activity that they take the uttermost pride in establishing healthy relationships with their athletes. I do understand why these cuts are being proposed, and I completely get that this isn't an easy decision for anyone here. But cutting the, thi but cutting the things that keep kids connected and together is an option that would hurt so many people, not just for this year, but for so many more years to come. Sports and school play are such an important part of many kids' lives, and taking these things away from them would be devastating. Thank you. My name is Tori Highland. I live over on the Chicago Scania border. My kids are in sixth grade and eighth grade. Um, a lot of what has been said I agree with. And some things I'd like you to consider <coughs> when you're looking at your cuts is administration, um, the number of secretaries or administrative positions that we have throughout the entire district is quite high. I work for a large company and we have about one admin for every 400 people. And so when I see we have 10 or more, that's quite extensive. I don't like to see cuts to the custodians because they keep our buildings clean. They're here in case of our kids have an issue when we have an after school program. Um, and I don't want to see any cuts to the middle school program extracurricular because there's a lot of programs that kids um, try out for the first time. And we're one of the few school districts that actually allows some of the more special ed, maybe higher functioning students to try a sport for the first time in their life and I've witnessed firsthand, both in seventh grade and eighth grade, how that has brought the kids closer together and given um, special need kids the boost in their confidence that they really truly need. And that will carry over into high school. And if we lose that confidence, we could lose those kids. Thank you. Thank you. Chad Hollister. Chad Oster. I've lived in the district for 30 years and lived here, paid taxes for the last 10. I have four kids that, God willing, all graduate from Chisago someday. Um, a lot of teachers that taught me growing up here. And I hope they would say that I was always an honest, good person who did the right thing. And last year, I came to, came to the governing body with some concerns about construction costs, being a professional in the field of roofing, and I felt like my opinion wasn't taken seriously 
And I know we're talking about bonds and bricks and mortar, but when I'm talking about saving a lot of money and I felt like didn't really get a lot of questions answered, and now, and I was assured at the time, our operating costs, we were so frugal with our money and we, we spend so wisely. I said at the time, well, I just hope we don't find ourselves the next five years talking about cutting teachers, cutting programs, because that'd be really troubling to me when I'm telling you you could be saving a lot of money. And I don't really feel like I'm being listened to. And I don't wear a suit and tie to work every day. I'm a blue collar guy. I did graduate from college. But that doesn't make my opinion any less valid. And I have been in the field for 20 years and I do know what I'm talking about. And I just find it very troubling that, you know, it still comes back to taxpayer dollars. Whether it's a levy or a bond, it comes from the same people. So when we say it's two different things, I don't feel it is two different things. And I'm concerned that we, we were so sure we were making the right decision then. Now, not even a year later, we don't understand how we're, we have the shortfall. I just find that very concerning. And cutting sports is an absolute mistake, in my opinion. A lot of some of the people in this room coached me made me the person I am today and I just think it's a huge part. I know 10% of some school budgets go towards funding school sports and it's a big cost but they also bring in money and they teach a lot of valuable lessons to kids and it's the identity of a school, frankly. I just think it's it's unimaginable to even, to even be brought up is unimaginable to me. But I just hope that the spending that's been going on and now these cuts, I hope that it's the right thing. And I hope we're being transparent on exactly, and we actually know what we're talking about when we say, well, we're cutting and we know this, well, is this a short-term fix? Because to me, it looks like short-term fixes. It doesn't look like long-term fixes. And with all the facility updates and bringing things up to code, we should be saving money on energy costs because now we're, our heating systems, cooling systems, all that stuff's being brought up code so we should be having some you know there should be some lowering of the operating costs so I, I just find it a little troubling that not even a year later we're talking about cuts and I understand it's a different thing bonds and levies but thank you well I'm sorry I have Nick is it Braylon Brown Brown sorry I didn't my name is Nick Brim. I'm from uh, Schaefer. Uh, I've got three kids that are in the district here, and uh, I used to go to school here back when I was uh, their age as well. Uh, my brother was in school here, uh, did sports and everything as well. Um, I guess my biggest concerns is, is uh, I'm just going to kind of piggyback off of Melissa a little bit. Um, looking at all the cuts, that it, my biggest question is if all the younger sides of everything uh, from the cuts we're taking from the lower spectrum. We're talking 20, 30,000. Why aren't we looking at anybody in the administration? Because I know for a fact that there's got to be more money and more to be cut from the top than there is from the bottom. That's just in my eyes. Um, I, I spent some time on the minutes here on the website this afternoon um, just to kind of give you some for numbers. From 2017 and 2018, just the high school football alone, when I played football, there was five coaches. Okay, we're talking 10 coaches for one for, for just high school, okay? That seems outrageous to me. Um, just with their pay alone, in the 10 coaches, you're talking $43,000. That's just from 2017 and 2018. Okay, that's an average of almost 4,400 bucks. Now you look at 2018 to 2019, same 10 coaches, you're looking at another almost 45,000. You went up $1,262 in a year. Same coaches, if you cut that back, Five coaches, not that I want to see coaches go away because I believe our kids need sports, but you're looking at $23,519 savings by cutting five coaches that if you could probably pick up for voluntary. I volunteer my time coaching for my kids, my daughter. I, I vote or you know, I volunteer for all or volunteer for all of that. Um, you know, my biggest question is, and I look at it this way, if you even look at an administration cut of twenty thousand dollars, seriously, twenty seven five as far as top cut off of every single administrator in, administrator in the district, along with the cut with the football, you're talking $271,000 cut in a year. Now, that is a huge substantial mark where you can save some teachers jobs. I'm talking the math teacher, 
all of the English and everything else, that is important. If you think that the math and the English is not important, I'm sorry, but look at a lot of the different school districts around the country here. They're not doing so hot. There's a reason why I keep my kids in Chisago Lakes. It's because you guys are a great district. If you look at North Branch, Forest Lake, they are all trouble. Why is everybody coming here? Because they like the school district. Everybody loves you. You guys do a great job. Don't fall back on it. Thank you. Rebecca Doherty. Hello, I'm Rebecca Doherty and I'm a sixth grade student at this school. Every morning, every once in a while, I walk to school, hoping for a day of bright learning, bright future, and back in the days of when there were school activities, and every day, I would hope that there would be a new chance to do something I love. And now, I've heard of being cut, <coughs> budget cuts. For that matter, I would like people to just find a way to help kids, because kids deserve the confidence and the appreciation and the love from people who come to watch them do what they love. They Kids who do this are amazing in every single way. They love themselves for doing it. There are kids who can get up on stage and do a play. There are kids who can do a sport and hope that they are the ones who will help their team to a victory. There are also teachers. There are teachers retiring this year. And there are also teachers being cut. Those are people who are losing their jobs, losing their careers. Those people, if they want to, I believe they should stay. That means so much to me that teachers, if they wanted to, could stay. I believe that budget cuts over so many activities, so many things that are being cut for budget reasons, I believe they should stay for the kids who deserve the confidence and the love they get from their audience or from their viewers. They deserve that. That helps them become more intact with the school. If you've ever seen people after they play a game or something and people come to watch, they all get the appreciation from everybody. Nice touchdown. Oh, that slap shot of yours was amazing. Man, that performance of yours was amazing. I can't believe how well you did. Everyone deserves that at least once in their life. I believe everyone deserves a chance to have something like that from people, from peers, from parents, from adults who just want to be around them because of their properties and what they do. I thank you for letting me stand up here as a student. Good evening, I'm Ryan Anderson. I live in Lindstrom, Minnesota, and I, uh, I, I guess I could say that I wear three hats in this community. One, I am a community member, uh, a coach, as well as a teacher. Uh, I come before you today, uh, and I, one, well, let me back up. I'd like to thank you for this opportunity. Uh, but I come before you today with some concerns. Uh, I could stand up here for probably a good half an hour with a lot of them. Uh, being a math guy myself, I like to dig into some numbers and, and really try to find some, try to find answers that way. Uh, I could go on at length uh, regarding activities, but I'm here today on, on behalf of the math department. Uh, we were, we were kind of blindsided a little bit uh, earlier, and I'd like to piggyback off a little bit of what Todd has already mentioned uh, with, the, with the ADSIS grant and, and the math department going forward. Uh, we, we currently rate the schools and, and use the, the scores of our exams as a, as a way to kind of advertise to other families to get more families to come into our district. Uh, one of those scores would be the ACT. And that, that consists of a reading, a writing, a math, and a science portion. 
three of those four pieces of that exam are two of the uh, proposed cuts at the high school, which to me seems a little bit strange. If we're relying on this information to bring people in, we probably don't want to be getting rid of those disciplines. The other one that actually is used more towards the rating and the grading of our schools and our district is the MCA scores. Uh, two pieces of that that go into that portion or the portion of the ratings uh, are the math and the English, again, a uh, piece that's being cut or pr proposed to be cut. Uh, so to me, it seems like if we're having this issue of, well, not an issue, but if we're presenting this idea of cutting a math and an English position and we're using that for an exam to, to rate our schools, it, it doesn't seem like it, it would make a whole lot of sense to get rid of those disciplines. I also stand before you here today because I, I do not want this to sound as though I am saying pick math or keep math, pick something else to cut. I'm asking you to put on your creative hats and, and, and really dive in and, and try to find that money in a different position. I feel like that if, if we really dug a little bit deeper, and I'm not saying that you haven't, but if, if we dig a little bit deeper, I think we can really find some, some things and some monies to, to help alleviate some of our issues going forward. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Um, Zach Del Valley. Hi, I'm Zach Del Valley. I'm an eighth grade student here at the Shasta Woods Middle School, and I would just like to talk about the middle school play, just like a lot of my peers. Um, so I've been in doing plays since first grade and every single time it's always been fun because I make friends that I probably wouldn't have met before and then the middle school play was like a whole new thing for me because it was in front of an audience five times in front of sixth, seventh, eighth graders and then two for the general audience and just for that like speaking from everyone it, it really helps you with talking to people in a big group. And like some people might want to be like a lawyer, an actor, myself. And that helps you like gain that courage that you can talk in front of the people. And it's it basically the play, we aren't just like friends, like we're really family, like even out of the play. We still say hi to each other in the um, halls. So taking away the, like the middle school play would be just taking away like opportunities for everyone to do what they love or want to try. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Appreciate it. Um, Jeremy, you want to come up now? Yeah. Jeremy Orton. I'm Jeremy Orton. I'm uh, from Chisago City. I'm a third generation. My son is a sixth grader here. He's a fourth generation student of Chisago. Can you hear me? No. Okay. Uh, All right, let's start over. I'm Jeremy Orton. I'm from Chisago. I'm a third generation person here. My son is a fourth generation to go to Chisago Lake, so uh, we were here a long time ago, and what really troubles me is, you know, not even my 40s, my mother's in her 60s, my grandparents are in their 80s. We've never had this kind of a budget deficit this high before, ever. And I follow it, I've been following it for years. Uh, I've never sat on the board, I've never been on the city council, but I keep my ear to the ground. So a lot of these things, and I, appreciate what everybody here tonight has said because everything obviously means something to each and every one of you in this room. What we need from you guys is to make that happen. This was something that was first seen 18 months ago that could have been changed, stopped, or safeguarded a little better than it was. So as they had said, dig down deep, figure out what to cut, what not to cut. We need to come up with a game plan on how 
how we can keep everything and shorten a little bit, take a little bit of fat off every department, take a little fat off uh, every division, start charging more money for your football, your baseball, your the play, tickets, what have you. There, there's ways we can make this all work for everybody. Not everything has to be cut. Uh, there's parents in this community, I mean, I coach five sports, and I have been for the last six years, and many coaches in this room, we don't ask for a penny, we volunteer our time. But yeah, we have many, many paid coaches on our uh, payroll budget right here, which can all be shaped off. You know, there, there's plenty of places so the kids can still be happy, be part of a group, have a team effort, be on their play, be in a football team, girls can be in their soccer, the volleyball, whatever it may be, math league, um, all that together, none of it should be cut. I, we never had any cuts. Um, we had the same issues, same problems, and it was a, there was less money in the community back then. Now I feel it's more for show than it is for the actual, uh, whether it be football or it be math or whatever it is. I feel like it's just more show. It's not enough, uh, one of the teachers had said it earlier, it needs to get back to what we actually do. You know, yes, everybody's moving here. This place is growing like nobody's business because we have the most fanciest uh, football stadiums. We have the we have brand new tennis courts. We have two pools. We have we have everything, which we all live in this community pay for. <coughs> so it's my feeling that none of this stuff should be cut. And if it means taking our budget to an outside source and having them redo it and go through it and trim fat off different departments, I think it all can be done. It just how willing are we to get there? And I think every person who's sitting in this room right now would be willing to help get to that point. Whether it means taking money out of their own personal pockets, time off of their day, everybody's willing to help. So, thank you for your time. Thanks, Jeremy. Rick Bowens. Hi, my name is Rick Bowens. At Chisago Lakes High School, and I'm reading a letter that was submitted by Pauline Hinch. She's the middle school science teacher to Chisago Lakes School Board and Administration. Six years ago, after 13 years of teaching at the middle school, my job was in jeopardy. Due to low enrollment, my job was cut in half. I was astonished. After that many years of teaching, I could be in a very difficult situation. That just goes to show the dedication and longevity of the science department here at the middle school. I made the decision to do a job outside of the classroom. It was a half time for the first three years and then full time for another two years. <clears throat> Due to our last attempt to supply our district savings account, I was put back in the classroom. In the meantime, the classroom world had gone digital. Our books were gone and kids had books online. Text resources like worksheets and labs were all online as well. Teachers were organizing classrooms through Google rather than a binder of papers. Kids were using technology so much that I had to learn how to police what they were doing on it but without knowing it myself, I decided to roll up my sleeves and jump right in. But it was a little foreign to me. I can learn a lot of things and in a relatively short amount of time, but there has been a significant amount of change in the last five years. If it were not enough, <coughs> sorry, if it were not for having Miss Whitney Anderson in our middle school as a technology integrationist full time to work with me, I would not have been able to learn all that I have missed and then some in such a short amount of time. Honestly, if we didn't have her in our building, I believe I would have been too intimidated to try a lot of the things that I've done. She has directly impacted my ability to teach and my students' ability to learn at the same manner as their other classes. Many things that our staff call Ms. Anderson for are not things that can be seen ahead of time. Needs arise quickly and without notice. Because she is right here in the building most of the time, we were able to get the help that we need very quickly. I recently had an opportunity to attend the TIES conference as well as do a site visit to Southview Middle School in Edina. There's a world out there through technology that we have never, <coughs> not even begun to touch yet. Dropping the amount of support with technology to seven grades, approximately 2,100 students and 130 staff is a catastrophic idea. In order to keep up with other districts in Minnesota, we need to be as strong as possible in this area. We are capable of doing great things here at Chisago Lakes. We are already doing wonderful things, but we are still not where we could be. I have a daughter in first grade and a son behind beginning preschool next year. I hope that when they go through school in our district, they can, that they can be getting the same quality of education of other kids, 
that they will someday meet in the college classrooms. Technology is a key to that. I'm a loyal staff. I will support whatever needs to happen with the budget. I will once again roll up my sleeves and do what I need to do for our students. I am totally here for our kids, but I need the continued support that only a full-time technology integration can provide. Ilsa, John, Ilsa Johnson. Did I pronounce her right? Hi, uh, I'm Ilsa Johnson. I'm a junior at Chisago Lakes High School, and I was asked to speak here by a friend and fellow teammate to try and emphasize the importance of middle school activities. Middle school is an important developmental age for people. Kids are trying to figure out what interests them, and extracurriculars are wonderful ways to help. Middle school sports and activities allow opportunities for kids to be included and accepted by their peers, which some may not find in other places. Participating in a team event, whether it be a sport, play, or robotics club, allow for students to build relationships with others that make impacts on their lives. Some of my best friends to this day were made through said activities. Students can also connect with older ones, having people they know outside of their own class to interact with once they reach high school. Everyone gets a chance to try anything, which I think is very valuable. Activities can also give students something to do after school so their free time isn't wasted or spent making potentially poor decisions. Lastly, participating in a sport or activity is very beneficial on the health side of things, allowing the brain to think and function in ways different to the classroom setting and creating healthy habits and positive connections to exercise. I am very fortunate to be on a 7 through 12 team and I got to build relationships both as a younger and older athlete. But if my sport wasn't like that and the middle schoolers on my team couldn't be there, I personally feel like the whole dynamic would be off. One of my favorite things about swimming is the inclusiveness that it holds. We become a big family, and having the younger kids there and seeing them improve and grow as both people and athletes make it all the more worthwhile. <coughs> These kids care about their activities, and I believe they deserve to keep them. Thank you. Thank you, Ilsa. Bob Barrett. Can I pass out a copy to you guys? What I'm about to read. So, uh, thank you. My name is Bob Barrett. I live in Franconia Township. I have two daughters and I graduated in the district. I'm a former state representative, former member of the school finance committee, current uh, sports official, mostly in ninth grade and some middle school as well. And I'm also a 15 year uh, student mentor here, currently at the uh, high school, a uh, young boy that I uh, meet with once a month. Uh, so I wear a lot of hats, I think, but what I tried to do when I found out about the situation is I tried to find any and every financial document and other means of uh, communication that I could find to understand the issue. Because what I heard is not enough money from the state and uh, special ed uh, costs. That's part of the story, it's not all the story. Um, I want to correct some information that was heard earlier. Your revenue in the last four years has gone up 14% even though the state funding formula has gone up roughly to. And that's for many reasons. You, get, you have more kids now going to our district. Thank you, North Branch. Um, and other reasons as well. But anyway, your revenue is going up, and, but so are your expenses. Your expenses in 2018 went up 6.9% from the previous year. And that's in the general fund. Um, we're here tonight really because of an unforced error. I hate to say that, but that's true. You know, uh, something happened with the budget, it wasn't right, you approved it mistakenly, uh, it wasn't what it should have been. Had that not, had that not happened, um, we wouldn't be here tonight. But we're here, so we need to make the best of it and find good answers to these problems we have. So I wanna talk about expenses. Um, the administration has talked about special ed costs and funding, uh, implying those are the only two problems, uh, not true. Um, one important issue the school board has not discussed is the fact that the district administration expenses have increased by 56.1% over the past two years, between 2016 and 2018. That's according to the audited financial statements. In 2016, your administration expenses with pension, this is from the changes in financial position page of the audited financial statement. 2016, it was 1.535 million. 2018, it was 2.396 million. Uh, 
another line item says it went from 1.535 to 1.9 million. That's without uh, the difference in those two are our pension costs. Um, that's a lot of money. Um, what I've found when I've been looking through the financial statements is um, there was a one-time severance pay paid in 2018 of $231,622. Didn't find that in your board minutes. I found it uh, by uh, sending an email to your administration. I want to know who that was paid to and for what purpose. Also, two $125,000 $125, expenses for post post-retirement health care benefits. I think those are for your new superintendent and business manager. Why? Uh, why did that happen? Your time I don't know anything about salary increases. Bob, it's not online. Your time's up. Thank you. My name is Mark McGeary. I live in Chisago City. I have, uh, I, I have two kids in the schools. Um, while we're pulling that up, I'd like to thank you for sharing that information. Um, and I'd like to use it, if I can, as I'm speaking. Um, wh what I read on the slide was a $40 million budget was approved last June. Is that correct? So there, there's $40 million budgeted. There's $40 million coming in. And so I find it very disingenuous to use terms like underfunding. The money's there. So a, a term like underfunding is, I, I find, disingenuous. Um, it, it shows it right there. What we have here is an overspending problem you've spent too much money and you need to stop spending money on unbudgeted items. So I would request, rather than cutting all these budgeted items, that you cut unbudgeted expenses. And I'd like you to be more forthcoming on what those unbudgeted expenses are and simply stop spending money on those items. And if you, if you can't, if you 